Is the defensive tackle position the weakest position for the Cowboys going into the 2023 season? All that and more this, this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team every locked, day. Locked On. Locked, locked, locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, today we are continuing with our positional preview as we get you ready for training camp and the 2023 season. We're on to the defensive tackles today. And my question for you before we get into some of these players is, is this the weakest position on the team going into camp? It's funny, right? Because, you know, we just finished last, you know, yesterday talking about the defensive end position. If you didn't get a chance, you guys definitely should go check that out, that conversation out. Uh, we go from maybe the greatest position on this team to the weakest one, I think. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think that the Cowboys kind of have sort of, you know, very much cobbled together this kind of defensive tackle room. You know, like we talked about it in the defensive ends that a lot of these guys uh, on the outside will reduce to play some snaps inside. And, and I think what that means is that they're limiting – the number of snaps that are going to be actually played by the, by actual defensive tackles. Uh, and, and that's to, you know, limit the exposure because they just don't have a ton of talent here, right? They've got uh, a guy in Oso Digizua that they like. They drafted a guy in the first round. We'll see how that is. They have some veteran guys, uh, one that they like and one that they maybe don't like. And they've got some down roster guys. We'll talk about all of them. But I think as of right now, the known quantities at this position um, they're, it's not great. I, I think there's a lot of hope on some upside folks, uh, but as it stands right now, you know, the Cowboys, unless they get some jumps from one or two of these guys, they're going to rely heavily on their defensive ends to kind of fill in the gaps and the lack of talent in the defensive tackle room. I mean, this is the way it's been for the last decade or so, right? Like they've kind of yeah. just tried to cobble together this position with guys that are, you know, former defensive ends or guys that are kind of in the last stages of their careers. They just haven't really put a priority on this position until this year with Mozzie Smith, which leads me to my next question. What are the expectations for Mozzie Smith? Because usually when you draft a defensive tackle high, it's, Hey, come in, be a rotational player, but it feels like the Cowboys are going to ask him to be more than that. Yeah. I mean, I think that he's, he's definitely going to be part of a rotation, but I, yeah, I mean, I do think that they're going to ask more of him than they probably have you know, any of their other defensive tackles, especially rookie defensive tackles in a while, right? I mean, they haven't drafted a first round defensive tackle, true defensive tackle. Uh, I think it was in like 30 years. I mean, you can call Marcus was it Russell Spears Maryland was the last one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, you can call Marcus Spears a defensive tackle if you want, but it's still a pretty different position than yeah, what we're talking yeah. about here. So an interior player, right? An interior player. Yeah. Like a, like a zero or a one inside, yeah. right? Like that's what we're going to see. Uh, this uh, Mozzie mostly lining up for it. And I think that, yes, the, the, if your question is, are the Cowboys going to be asking more of him than you would normally ask of a, of a defensive tackle in the first round? I, I do think that that's true. I, I also think that they're relying on him to do things that he – uh, has shown that he could do in college. Like they're not asking him to come in and be a dominant pass rusher right away. Like they've got that part set, figured out in other it, areas. It feels right? like it's the opposite of what they did with Jalen Tolbert last year. Like instead of trying to have Tolbert tried to learn all three receiver positions and it didn't work out. I think for Mozzie, it's go be a nose tackle, stop the run. We'll, we'll kind of figure out the rest, the more you play. And that's enough. You know, honestly, yeah. with this defense, they've got so much. We've been, look, we're going to go through the rest of this defense and we're going to be very thrilled with, with, with yes. how, the, how it looks in the rest of the depth chart. And there's a reason for that. They've, they've built the, the rest of this defense up and they have lots of depth there. What they need Mozzie to do is very simple and very straightforward, but it's not easy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, 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 hey, stop the run inside, take up blockers, uh, you know, make it so the teams are not able to get chunks on first and second down and that we're going to set up more third downs for our pass rush. I think Mozzie will eventually kind of come along a little bit more as a pass rusher, but I think to answer your question, yes, he probably will be asked to play 
more than than uh, the average defensive rookie defensive tackle. But I also think that he's being asked to do things uh, pretty similarly as far as job uh, wise that he did in college. And I, I think that makes that kind of mitigates some of the learning curve there. How successful can a young defensive tackle be stopping the run? Like, is it easier to be a contributing player at defensive tackle by being a run stopper, or can you come in and rush the passer better? Like, Compare and contrast those two for me a little bit. I think pass rushing is is a much more difficult task to learn, especially inside the the uh, the the number the quality of offensive linemen at, at guard and center in the NFL versus what it is in college is is just it's it's not measurable, right? Like, and, and, and all you have to do is yes. look at what we've talked about, right? Think about all the great college offensive tackles that have come into the NFL and then pushed into guard, right? Like there is yes. no uh, uh, fat on on the bone with with that. Like they they basically use the best offensive lineman, whatever position you are, and then they find a way for you to get on the offensive line. So he's not going to get uh, uh, you know a, a bunch of weak you know uh, 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 matchups week to week. He's he's going to be facing tough guys you know every single week. Now having said that, he's so strong. He comes into the league so strong and so powerful uh, that I think that he will have a positive impact yep. in the run game uh, immediately. And I, and I do think that if you can come in with the kind of requisite strength, that's, <laughs> let me be clear. That's not easy. It's not no. easy to come into no. the NFL with as much strength as you need to kind of uh, plug things up in the middle, but it, it sure seems like he has that. And, and if he does, you know, kind of learning the nuance of, of how to fight off d double teams. And it, it's, it certainly is technique based, but I would say that it's not nearly as difficult as, you know, trying to come in and take your pass rushing game to the next level as an interior pass rusher. So how would you define like a successful rookie season for Mozzie Smith? Mm. Because I don't think it's going to be sacks. Like I, no. I think he could have a four sack season and be a disappointment. Like if he just struggles to stop the run, but he lucks into a couple sacks, like, I don't know if that's necessarily a positive thing. So how would you define like, Hey, you should be really encouraged by what Mozzie put on tape. Those, I mean, honestly, a lot of it is just going to have to be tape evaluation. There's not going to be a great stat. That's going to mean you, know, we can look at PFF grades if we want or whatever. Honestly, what I'll be looking at is, you know, look, we're we're bringing Mozzie in to try to get the Cowboys into more third and long situations, right? Yes. To, to kind of yes. stop early down running and stop early down success rates. So I guess that is kind of what I will be using as my measuring stick is did the Cowboys improve in kind of slowing down offenses on first and second down specifically against the run? Did the Cowboys get into more opportunities to rush the passer this year than last year? I think, you know, that it's, would be a win. Gonna, that, that itself yeah. would be a massive win, right? Yeah, and that's what they're going for. And I, so I think that's probably the measure of of like success that we probably should use. I don't know that kind of you know tackles or tackles. I don't for think loss counting stats, stats are going to help you, right? Uh, they aren't going to help you much with what we're looking for. I, I will also say, like situationally, like on third and short and fourth and short, is that when Mozzie ha is having a big impact in goal line, right? Like, is there just a couple plays a game or a couple plays a season where? He makes a big stop on fourth and short and the Cowboys get off the field. That's what I want to see. Cause I can remember those plays last year that Demarcus Lawrence made. How many game changing plays did Lawrence make as a defensive end yeah. on third and short, fourth and short to flip games around? I mean, the, there was a game against the Texans where he did it. There was against the lions. He did it that other than first and second down run stopping, stopping stuff. I want to see what Mozzie does in the, sh on the short yardage stuff. Yeah, and I think the other thing, if we're looking for other indicators of success, how how are the linebackers playing? How how you know, how yep. many, are the tackles? Uh, are linebackers able to make tackles clean? Are they getting held up by offensive linemen getting to the second level? It's it, you know those tackle is just one of those positions that you know metrics and analytics quite haven't found the way to isolate success the way they want on an individual basis the way they have other positions so I, I think that there is some metrics that you can look at there are some analytic profile stuff that you can take a look at to measure success but well i'll give you honestly one. i'll give you one yeah. i think like leighton van Resch. look at leighton van Resch's average depth of tackle last yeah, year that's a good compared one. to this year right if it's quite a bit better where he's making more tackles closer to the line of scrimmage, that probably indicates that Mozzie's doing a really good job. If it's the same or it's worse, then I think you should be a little bit disappointed with, with what you got from your first year defensive tackle.
it's it's like astrophysics and uh, you watch how i combine these marcus yep. uh yep. when you're when you're studying astrophysics you're not always studying the thing that you're looking at you're looking at how light is uh, affected by gravity or it's and that's what we're talking about what's the gravity of mozzie's presence on the field is he drawing more attention inside are linebackers able to run free is it are teams not running in the middle anymore as they as much as they were those are the kind of indications we're looking for his true impact on the field and that's the thing is if if offenses feel like hey it's not useful trying to run up the middle let's run sideline to sideline that's where dan quinn's defense it's just built yeah. on speed and length is going to have a lot of success so that's called, I, I know that's a kind of a complicated answer that we gave here, but that's what we're looking for for Mozzie is an impact that goes kind of beyond the box scores. Landon, let's talk about the player that I think improved the most from the 2022 season next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing, and there is no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to join today. You can go bet on baseball every single day. You can also go bet on tennis. There's boxing, summer league basketball. We've got UFC. Tons of stuff to go wager on right now. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Every day is on tomorrow's show. We're going to look at the linebackers. The, we just got done talking a little bit about Leighton Van Der Esch. We'll talk about him returning, Damone Clark. What does Jabril Cox have for us in year three? Uh, Demario Orvershawn. There's so Lots much of, to discuss. So yeah, much to discuss. So there. much to discuss. But let's talk about Osa Odigizua, who yeah. longtime listeners, everydayers know that we are big fans I don't think people realize how much he improved last year. I'm, yeah. I'm going to run through some numbers for you on the improvement from year one to year two. Pass rush grade, 59th percentile to 71st percentile. Uh, run defense grade, 19th percentile to 82nd percentile. Pass rush win rate, 58th percentile to 82nd percentile. Uh, and then run stop percentage went from 53rd percentile to 83rd percentile. I thought... PFF was a little low on him in 2021. I, too. I don't think they were low on him in 2022. I thought he was awesome. I agree. You know, I think you and I have been on this from the beginning. Uh, I've been a fan of his since the draft process. I was really, frankly, shocked. He was one of those guys when you evaluated him, you saw all the pieces there, and you're like, well, what's what's missing here that I'm missing? And 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 honestly, I, I don't know that I was missing. I think you saw what the issue was. He needed to come into the league. He needed to probably get a little bit stronger than he was. Um, and I think, but, but everything else was there. He's had a, a credible amount of flexibility because of his wrestling background. He has explosion. He's, I mean, you know, for being 280 pounds, he was strong. And I think that was yeah. the thing, you know, that kind of really was tough on him uh, two years ago was that he was a 280-pound guy playing a nose tackle at times. And, mm -hmm. and he and he was doing it for the most part. I mean, yeah, maybe at a 20th percentile level, but, I mean, that's 20th percentile in the NFL at while you're playing at 280 pounds as a yeah. you know, young player. So I think he's grown a ton in the last year, the previous year, uh, and I think it, it, it played out that way. He was basically the defensive tackle that they could rely on. You know, they, they, he was the one. The one, the only one, and and they deployed him, you know. So I mean, look at all the snaps he played, you know. So I think I think he will come back this year, and I, I'm 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 expecting big things from him, just because again, more opportunity, more snaps, more chance to learn. Um, I, I still you know think he has some more uh, room to grow uh, as as a as a pass rusher and as a run defender. Um, and I think that having a, a, a Robin to his Batman or however yes. you want to phrase that yeah. is really, really going to help him just to kind of draw attention away. And just simply because they don't have to deploy him in situations that, you know, he's maybe not a, the best fit for. You they know, don't have to this, play him as a zero technique anymore yeah, if they don't like, want to, right? Like yeah, they have options and they've got bodies. And, and, it, and if, if, that, if only to take away the, you know, the one the hundred snaps that he had to play kind of out of position that he had to put on his body last year. I mean, that should help with just his kind of 
oh, you know, yeah. his endurance throughout the season and his ability to kind of be fresh as a pass rusher. The Cowboys desperately needed to kind of have somebody to kind of help uh, uh, alleviate Osa because even though he's a young player, he played so many snaps and that defensive yes. tackle, that is not an easy thing to do. And I, we're going to talk about this guy in a second, but adding somebody like Jonathan Hankins last year yeah. kind of allowed him to not have to do so much of the zero technique stuff, the nose tackle and taking on double teams because you've got somebody in Hankins who is legitimately 50 pounds heavier, yeah, 60 pounds heavier, maybe depending on the week, right? Uh, that That's very beneficial. Now Dan Quinn can move them around. They can find mismatches. They can find, you know, have places for him to shoot gaps. He's only 24 years old. I, yeah. I would expect him to be even better this year. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm, somewhat optimistic about this defensive line even if mozzie smith is your typical top 50 defensive tackle and he's only a rotational player i think osa has a chance to be a really solid starter for you again this yeah. season yeah and I, I also think that you know if they get you know what they want out of mozzie and they feel like he uh is playing at a level they want then maybe you get the opportunity to actually move osa around a little bit because we've seen uh, that's that, the you hope know? right yeah, like maybe a little bit as a four eye. You've seen him kind of move a little bit outside. I, I think at his size, he has some versatility to kind of brush the passer from some non conventional spots. So yes, uh, I, I, I I'm I'm huge huge believer in Osa. Have been from the from the beginning. Uh, I, I expect big things from him this year. Yeah. Now that there's less attention on him, and hopefully he's taking another step forward. I want to ask you about Jonathan Hankins really quickly. We don't have to spend a ton of time on him, but the Cowboys acquired him before the trade deadline last year, came in and played pretty well. Then he got hurt and I felt like they missed him. What can we expect from him now at this stage of his career? Cause he's, he's getting older. He doesn't have a lot of mobility. He misses a lot of tackles, but man, he's strong. Yeah. And uh, that's, it's a good question because, you know, I think he came back from the injury last year and, and he just didn't play you know, the kind of level that he had been playing previously in the season. Um, and I think that that's, you know, uh, 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 something to look out for, right? Like, you know, hopefully he comes back fully healthy and he can give you, you know, with some reduced snaps because now he's not <laughs> – he was another guy that when he was healthy, they were playing him a lot. I mean, a lot for, you know, a 350-plus pound nose tackle, right? Uh, so I, I imagine that we'll see reduced snaps, which will hopefully uh, uh, improve his effectiveness – um, and, you know, there is a possibility that he's fallen off. You know, I, I think we have to be prepared for the idea that we could get into the training camp and he, you know, maybe has, has taken us several steps back. He's at that age that it happens. So it's how old do you think he mind. is without licking? 33, 31, 32, 31. Yeah. The problem the 31 is, at nose tackle. That, is that's, that's 350 the point I was gonna make. When you're yeah. a 350 pound nose tackle it can fall off rather yeah. quickly we've been talking about guys that could be surprise cuts do you think there's any chance that like quentin bohana in year three just passes hankins and the cowboys are like you know what we needed hankins last year but bohana's cheaper and it's close and he's ascending while we were worried about hankins durability is there any possibility of that happening absolutely i mean i i think that that's what they want to happen you know um because of what you just mentioned, they don't necessarily want to have to pay Hankins, you know, whatever he's being paid, which Bohan is, vet, is veteran minimum. But yeah. remember a vet minimum contract is still quite a bit more than a six round rookie contract. Yeah. He's, we're talking like probably less, maybe a million dollars at this yeah. point in his third year, sixth round pick. Right. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I imagine like, I'm mean, less than that probably. So around uh, there, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so I I think that they would prefer Bohana if he was able to kind of take a step forward. They would prefer him to take that job, uh, and 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 you know run with it. Uh, but you know that that's we got to see. I, I think we've seen some stuff from Bohana that has you know made us kind of wonder whether that 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 if it's in him or not. And and I and I I think this is the year for him for sure because if he doesn't. If he doesn't do it this year, then I, 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 there could be a chance that he doesn't make the team. You, you think know? he was better last year than he was in the previous season? I do, um, but I also think that it wasn't uh, as he wasn't as consistent or as good as I had ex hoped or expected. So I, I, I think I think he, he was better, but it, he didn't make the leap that we were hoping, right? No, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he was better, but not better not enough. Good enough. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about a sleeper at the defensive tackle position who we think might be able to make an impact on this year's team next.
All right, we are back wrapping up the interior defensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys going into the 2023 season. We just got done talking about Mozzie Smith, Oso Digizuba, and then one of the other nose tackles between Jonathan Hankins, Quinton Bohana. Who is one other player in this rotation, whether it's Chauncey Golston, Neville Gallimore, Junior Fahoku, that you could see having a big impact this year? I think they're going to push pretty hard for Junior Fahoku. You know, I, I think we'll have a second to talk about Chauncey Golson here in a second, I imagine. But I think that Junior Fahoku is a guy that they've talked about already as basically working only as a three technique. Uh, they, I think that they want to bulk him up a little bit. You know, you and I, when he first got drafted, kind of envisioned him as maybe taking over the Golston role as the kind of inside outside guy and then maybe having Golston kind of reduce in as a full time three technique. I don't know that they're necessarily looking at it like that. I think at this, well, I mean, they could be, but it's still right now. It looks like they may be looking at, at Junior Fahoku as a full time three technique. So, as they probably uh, should. Like, yeah, you've got so many other good defensive ends. Like, you probably just, you're not going to play Fahoku there. You might as well just get him ready to play inside. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, look, for the, all the reasons that we just discussed, right? The Cowboys haven't had a lot of depth in the position. So, any number of, good players that could play any kind of defensive tackle would be useful for the Cowboys. And especially if they could, you know, rotate out a defensive end if you needed them to. So I think junior Fahoku is someone that they have, they have raved a lot about I think Eric Scott's getting most of the, of the <laughs> press on, you know, kind of who's the hot rookie buzz, but I've heard quite a bit of positive talk about junior Fahoku and about what he's done so far. I wouldn't be surprised if he was fast tracked onto the, onto the 53 man roster. Uh, if you know someone falls off in front of them. I'm still really intrigued by Chauncey Golston, and we've mentioned yeah. this several times, but from week 11 on, he was one of PFF's highest graded interior defensive linemen. I think fourth overall with a grade of 88.3. Not a ton of snaps in that time, but there was, you know, I think, five or six games where he played you know, 14 or more snaps, which is not insignificant. I, I just thought... It gets, good, last- it gets good opponents, too, I Yo, should yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, Playing against quality opponents, so... With his combination of quickness and his length, I, I, I saw a lot from him last year. Maybe not enough to be a full-time every down uh, you know, starter, but somebody who you could give 18 to 22 snaps a game and feel like there's not a drop-off. I think Golston could have a fairly significant role in this defense. Yeah, I think he could be a valuable rotational interior pass rusher. Um, I, I mean, I, I think you could even put him in an, on rundown situations in, in as a three technique and he probably could hold his own depending on the situation i wouldn't put him there full time uh depending no. on exactly what his weight is <laughs> that's the other thing is i you know having not seen these guys all summer it'll be interesting to see where where golson comes in size wise right i want um, him like 279 right yeah i was just gonna say 280 but yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah uh I, I think that's right around the age and that kind of still gives you a, a level of versatility so if you wanted to kick outside you still have some quickness uh but you're still not getting eaten alive at 280 hopefully with his length and his strength so uh, yeah, i yeah i think that what you saw from him last year as far as usage uh that should probably be the template starting out uh, uh for next year as yeah. well like not necessarily the starting three technique obviously because you love osa but a guy that will come in, maybe play next to Osa on some passing downs, relieve Osa on some uh, some of these early downs. I, I think you nailed it, like a 15 to 25 snap guy, depending on what the situation is and what the game is. Yeah, because I think if you're in a lot of obvious passing situations, I'd love to have him on the field over a Mazda yeah. Smith, right? Like play him and Osa together, give you a little bit more juice. But if it's one of those games where teams are just running the ball a lot, maybe he's yeah. not on the field, you know, a bunch. Maybe that's a heavy mozzie and hankins and osa game so we'll see the last question i have for you is any interest in adding you know a veteran free agent to this group or would you rather just see what golston what fahoku what some of these young guys have in training camp i think there's interest um i I think it depends i i I do think it's it's that that path though what you just talked about i think they're going to go into training camp see what they've got from these guys first but i definitely think that they probably are are keeping their eyes on on the, the the market to see what defensive tackles are available, who may have uh, excess players there. Maybe they could flip a, a, a pick. You know, I, I think it's 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 a contingency plan as it is right now, right? They're going to see what they've got, see if it's enough. And if it's not, if let's say Hankins is not what they need him to be or both Hankins and Bohana just haven't, you know, improved or have fallen off, then maybe you still need to go out and get one more veteran nose tackle to kind of help 
solidify that room a little bit better. But I think they're going to let the guys that are in the room now get that opportunity to, to kind of fail themselves. And if they do, they will be quick to uh, pull the trigger on a defensive tackle veteran if they have to. I wonder if this is one of the positions that the Cowboys are circling for like a November signing, kind of like Maybe. what we saw last year from yeah. T.Y. Hilton, what we saw the Eagles do when they brought in Ndamukong Sue, who is also a free agent. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys are like, okay, let's get through the first 10 weeks of the season, and then we'll add somebody that can kind of get us through the home stretch and get us to the playoffs. It feels like TV that might be the plan here. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, it, it, a position, defensive tackle at this point, especially like a nose tackle position, similar to running back, right? Where you feel like you could probably get your hands on yeah. a decent one of those guys almost any point of the season. Maybe not an elite guy, but a, a guy who can give you some guy, snaps. Right? Yeah. I, exactly. I think you could probably get that guy in November. So that you could be right about that. All right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. If you listen to the show on Stitcher, uh, they just announced today that they're actually getting rid of their platform. So make sure you switch over to a different podcast app so you can keep listening to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Check us out on YouTube as well. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you next time.